My friends could tell you that I tend to say some inappropriate things sometimes, like just randomly in conversation, I'll just come out with something that is just like this one-liner thing that nobody should be thinking, let alone saying. And that's just how I am sometimes, but I've just come to accept it, and most of the people I know have come to accept it. So there was this story that I wanted to start this video off with, and I texted it to Jason while I was working and said, do you think the story is too inappropriate for the videos? And he was like, well, I guess as long as you warn them that it's a little shocking and that they might not like it and they might not want to listen to it, then I guess it's okay. Um, he thought the story was funny, but wasn't sure if it was appropriate enough for this video. And I was like, you know what, I think my people will be okay. I think they'll understand that this is just a joke. It's probably a joke you've even heard before. So the joke goes like this. A couple of hunters were out in the woods and one of them falls to the ground. He doesn't seem to be breathing. His eyes are rolling back in his head and um, you know the other guy just starts to panic so he calls 911 and he frantically blurts out to the 911 operator, my friend is dead, what do I do? So the operator is trying to calm him down and she says, take it easy, I know how to help, just follow all of my instructions. First, let's just make sure he's dead. So there's a short pause and then the operator hears a loud gunshot and the guy comes back on the line and says, okay, now what? So the whole point of that story is that sometimes it's easy to hear words without really listening to the real message. And that happens a lot when we're, when we're talking to potential dog training clients. When we're listening to them about their dog and having them tell us about what's going on with their dog, our mind is in a completely different state than their mind. And a lot of times that can mess up our entire conversation with them and whether or not they sign up. So this is the number one way in this video, this is what we're covering today, the number one way to get your prospects to like you and to trust you more, believe what you say, and of course be more likely to sign up in the process. So if you watched the last video from last week, we were talking about how to answer the price question, which often comes up before you even get a chance to listen to them about their dog. When they say, you know, how much do you charge and you answer that question, one of the things that will derail that entire process before you even have a chance to listen to them is to tell them that it depends on what they need. Because the whole point of the next part of the conversation is for them to tell you what's bothering them about their dog. So this is something that I've noticed over um, recent times in talking to especially people one-on-one, -on -one, uh, other dog trainers in the coaching programs that I have. So I'll be on the phone with them or I'll see them in person and we will do kind of like a, a pretend sales process, a pr pretend consultation. And I'll pretend to be the dog training prospect and, and I'll have this crazy dog that's doing all kinds of things and I throw in, you know, just kind of exaggerate it and embellish the story a little bit just to be an unusual prospect and throw things at them and throw questions at them and, and then they're, they're the dog trainer and they try to sell me their training. So I noticed this recently in having these practice sessions with people that a lot of times in that first step of listening to me or to their dog training prospect, um, their potential client, that they will use the whole listening part of the conversation, asking what's going on with your dog, tell me how I can help. They'll use that part of the conversation as a means of coming up with a training plan. They'll ask questions like, you know, tell me about your dog's feeding schedule, tell me about your process for going for a walk, what kind of collar do you use, where is your dog's crate, what kind of food do you use. All these kind of analytical questions to talk about like what scientifically almost is going on with the dog, like you're in analysis mode, you're preparing to teach them. And here is one of the number one things you always have to remember when it comes to marketing your dog training business, that everything up to your client signing up and paying you is marketing. You're still in marketing phase up until the time they pay you. If you teach them a little bit or you give them a little bit of advice, sometimes that might be appropriate, especially if you work your consultations that way where it's kind of an evaluation and you are sharing information as well. And that's kind of a whole other topic. That's kind of a, a different debate for another video, whether or not you should do it that way. And there's different, of course, lots of right ways to do it. It's not just one right way to do that. But if you are viewing that part of the conversation where you have them tell you what's going on with their dog and what they want and what they don't want and uh, what's frustrating them about their dog, and you're using it as a means of preparing to train them and preparing for what you need to teach them, then you are derailing that whole step. You're doing the whole step completely wrong. The whole point of that first step in your sales conversation, listening to them, is to let them complain. 
So again, if you watched that video from last week, there was a download link that you could go to where you could download a, a checklist of the nine steps for a sales conversation and get more people signing up for your dog training programs. And that first step says, when you are in a conversation with them, the first step is to listen to them. But what you should be doing during that step is asking them questions like, what things does your dog do that bothers you most? What things do you want your dog to do that they're not doing right now? How is your dog's behavior impacting your everyday life? And what is the worst thing that's going to happen if nothing gets better? That's what marketing people call the cost of no action, meaning what is the worst thing that they think is going to happen if they don't do anything? Is it going to stay the same? Is it going to get worse? You need to find that out. You need to let them talk about that. You need to let them just get to the height of their frustration that they've ever had. Like the breaking point that caused them to look for a dog trainer in the first place, you want them to get to that point again while they're talking to you. You want them to share with you all their frustrations. You want them to tell you the worst of the worst that their dog has done and what that last straw was. You want them to tell you what they're afraid of, what they're frustrated by, um, what, they, what their goals are, what their ultimate dream would be for their dog's listening skills. If you're looking at it as a trainer from a, an analytical standpoint, you turn the whole conversation into a matter of their needs more so than what they want and what they're frustrated by and what's emotionally going on. People always make the best purchasing decisions, for, best for you, you know, as far as being a higher paying client, a better client, um, you know, being more likely to sign up quicker, all those things, they're, they're gonna be more likely to do those things if they make the decision based on their wants, their emotions, what they desire, what they prefer, what their frustrations are, more so than what their needs are. Close the door. Julia has to interrupt every single video I ever do. That's why you ever see any splices in my video. It's because I have three kids and they don't go away. She's looking at me right now. She's peering through the little slats in my plantation shutter thingies. Anyway, so there's this old quote. Uh, how does it go? Um, no man ever listened to him. List, no man ever listened himself out of a job. I knew I would not be able to get that out. No man ever listened himself out of a job. Listening to people makes them like you more, it makes them listen to you more, it makes them think you're more interesting, and it makes them more likely to trust what you say afterwards. So that first step is so, so important, but it's also important not just to listen to them, but to listen to them the right way. Ask them the right questions. Get yourself out of training and teaching mode. That's for after they sign up. You have marketing mode all the way until they sign up, and then you tell them what they need. So always keep that in mind. You have the listening step, which is just there to let them complain. Let them just kind of dump on you all of their frustrations. Get it out of them. Ask them extra questions to pull that stuff out of them. Get them as uh, emotional about it as you can. And then it's a lot easier when you reassure them and you continue with the rest of the steps, which again, you can download if you don't have it already. The checklist is below this video as well. There's a link straight to it. Make sure you use that in your sales conversations from now on. It'll help keep you straight, make all your consultations a lot shorter and a lot more effective. So use that. And um, if as you go into the step after listening to them, they're more likely to listen to you and believe what you say. Because people ultimately understand other people more if they feel understood. So that is your first number one priority in your sales conversations with people is to make them feel understood. Make them feel heard. Goes a long way. Really, 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 really. Okay, so here's what's next. Download the PDF down below this video, and if you want more training on this topic, I have a workshop that we run twice a year, so just keep on the lookout for that. It might be opening soon, depending on when you're watching this video. It's at dogtrainerworkshop.com, and the sales conversation is how to sell, how to, how to get more yeses in a sales conversation is all part of, that's one part of that workshop. So check that out as well, dogtrainerworkshop.com, and watch for another video next week. See you guys later.